Hey guys, Luke again. Uh, thought I'd give you another video since it's been quite some time. So this is going to be a Photoshop video on how to draw more attention to the subject of the image. Um, this only really works if you have a subject. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be a model or clothing or anything. Um, but for landscapes, this probably won't work as well. Um, so essentially, this is just how to draw the eye in. This was shot natural light, as was the next photo that I'm going to show you. Um, it was shot with the 35 1.4 by Rakinon, same lens as the Samyang. Um, so you get a little bit of a depth, depth of field separation that will still draw your eye to the model. But as shot, like this, it's a lot less. Um, so I'm just going to turn this on, and we'll go down the... Uh, list for you guys of what I did. Just give me one sec. So first step with this photo was cloning out a bunch of uh, just distracting elements. So you can see here on the grass, just some little divots, a little bit of uh, cement there, and a little um, break in the cement here. So the first step was to just clone all that out, which I use the clone tool. When I'm doing stuff like that, I'll use it at 30% um, flow. Um, for skin, I do 10 or less, but for cleaning the background, I usually do 30% uh, flow. Also, always when you're cloning to clean the background, always make a separate layer. In fact, I made one separate layer for that. Then I did my skin on the tones and texture, which you can see on my skin editing video. Then I made, I merged these two and made three more copies to fix um, a line in the dress and just some other stuff on the clothes that I wanted to fix, which will hopefully load soon. I'm kind of overloading my computer right now. So yeah, there's just a line down the dress that I don't know if it was a crease or if it was supposed to be there, but I liked it better without. So the next step was to do my dodge and burn. So this was just my skin editing. Skin and dodge and burn, that's my standard edit for pretty much any photo that I'm making. And then I just made a bunch of adjustment layers. So I'll turn those off one by one for you. Okay, so first layer I always do is a colors curve or a color balance, as well as a curves layer. So the colors gave it a nice, cool uh, cool feel. And then the curves, I uh, actually have started doing this quite a bit. I'll raise the black point um, so it's a little bit washed out in the blacks. Um, it really adds a little nice contrast feel to it. And then I just played a little more with uh, my red, green, blue channel. Just a little bit, very subtle stuff. Um, then. I made a mask using whatever this tool is, the quick selection tool around uh, Taylor here. Um, and essentially just used that to darken the background very subtly once it loads. Come on. So that's very subtle. You can see when I toggle it, the background gets a little darker, not a ton though. So, and these were just, let's see what we got here. Come on. Sorry, my computer is a little, little overloaded right now. So I did a uh, pasteurized layer, a vibrance layer, a black and white layer, and a brightness layer. And the black and white opacity is down to seven. Um, this you can use to, uh, using these sliders, you can go color by color and you can mute some colors and you can make some other colors stand out. I highly suggest playing around with that. Um, did some vibrance and the posturizing. So moving on. I then did a general hue saturation layer. Oops. Okay, hue saturation layer that just pretty much, I believe I just lowered the saturation of the greens and these oranges up here. Another black and white layer, which darkens the greens even more. 
another color balance layer, which darkens the um, shadows more, another curves layer, and just a layer to darken these uh, little black panels. And then finally, my main step is making a levels layer and then adding a gradient to it. Um, you really have to be careful with this because it's if you do it wrong, it's very easy to see it. Um, but you pretty much make a levels layer. Come on. And then you drag your white point down. So that's just going to mute everything, um, pretty much. Um, and to the point where if it's at 100%, generally that looks very fake. Whereas if you bring it down to 50 or 53 where I had it, it really draws the eye into the brightest thing in the frame, which happens to be Taylor, our model here. So here's the before, here's the after. You can see quite a big difference. Um, it's a little easier to do this with strobe on location. Um, this was shot at like probably three in the afternoon and it was a very sunny day, so I don't have strobes that can outpower the sun like that. And also if you want the shallow depth of field, um, that won't work or you'll have to use a bunch of ND filters. Um, it's a lot easier just shooting natural light and then working on it in post, though it does take extra layers. Now moving on to our next shot. So here's the beginning of this photo. Um, still good, it's a sharp photo. This was taken wide open as well at uh, 35 millimeter 1.4. Um, and I pretty much just cleaned a bunch of stuff over here and up here, um, as well as this leaves down here. And then we'll go one by one. I might add, you know, my bread and butter dodge and burn layer, add a bunch of dimension to the model. And then for color layers, pretty much just playing around with things that I added. So curves layer, first curves layer just dragged the uh, mids and the blacks down a lot. Then I really didn't like how blue this was here in the railing. Um, I'm not sure if that was just the color of it, um, but there's also some chromatic aberrations around the model in here. So I create a CA fix uh, layer, which is essentially just a hue saturation layer um, with the magenta and blue saturation down quite a bit. And we'll see when that kicks in. So as you can see, that really uh, muted the blues as well as the CA that was all around the model and on the bag here. Then I did another curves layer to fix the darkness on the bag. It was affected by uh, this backlight here. Um, another curves layer. And then finally, that levels layer to really darken the outside and the bottom so that your eye gets dragged right to the model right to the dress and the shoes and what the shoot was for. So before, after. There's a lot you can do pretty much um, just by playing around. Generally I'll make multiple layers of an adjustment layer because if you were to do this um, and all these edits in a single layer, it gets really annoying because generally it won't look good in a single layer. So when you do small adjustments, in multiple layers you can get a much better result um, quicker pretty much. Otherwise you have to do a lot of nitpicking and small changes will make small changes in the curve will make significant changes in the photo etc. Just make multiple layers. Your files will be bigger but it's worth it. Um, also play a lot with the color balance. You can do a lot of split toning and stuff with that. Um, Honestly, on every photo I do a levels layer, color balance layer, and curves layer at least. T generally, I'll also add a black and white layer if I want to wash out a little bit. So I'll just show you an example of that. Um, so we'll drag the blues down. We'll get the bag show, the pattern on the um, dress to show, and the shoes to pop out. But not too much. And then from here, Let's drag that to the top so it's real black and white. Then from here, just lower your opacity um, pretty much till where you like it. It doesn't have to be all the way 100%. It doesn't have to be zero, um, just to get a little bit of a washout. Um, and again, this will be really subtle. This is really good if you want to lower, you, if you want your blues darker, if you want specific colors to be darker or a little bit less stated in the frame. 
So I hope this video helped. Uh, just keep playing around, make a bunch of adjustment layers and do small changes. Um, also, if you don't know how to make gradients, um, it's just this tool right here under the eraser. And then it'll ask if you want to do a few different types. I usually use, like in the other photo, I use this tool right here. And that has to be on black to white. And that'll allow you, if you're clicked on the mask layer, to draw in or paint in that mask. Um, so yeah, I generally, uh, I highly suggest trying that out. Um, don't go overboard with it, but see what you can do just to drag the eye a little bit more to your subject. Hope you guys found this helpful. Enjoy, until next time.